So then finally, you know, like I said, all of that was going on in my head. And I was just like, all right, I got to quit. So I quit. I quit a good paying job. I mm-hmm. was working in finance. Like I had a good, I had a 30th floor ocean view suite, like everything. I, I was living the corporate life. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Then I was like, man, I'm leaving all this to clean some toilets. This is crazy, right. man. I can't believe this. <laughs> and to be in this like industry, being an entrepreneur, you gotta have that mindset, man. Like the hustle mentality. So Hand it to the top, they ain't none of y'all stopping me. Used to say I never get a ring, Charles Barkley. Now I got a wife, got kids, own property. Bubble eye beans that look like that be watching me. Okay, I lied about the beans, but that was hard though. I'm still in that black act, but she starred though. What's up, y'all? It's the cleaning business GOAT, Mr. AJ Simmons, founder of the Clean Biz Network. And today's guest has been on the he actually he's been the fastest growing CBN member to date, right? So and he's actually been on here for an interview with me before. And I had to bring him back on, get this update, y'all, and share some games, some free game from this guy right here, man. So I'm happy to have him back. Please welcome the owner of Pacific Island Cleaning, my Hawaiian brother, Mr. Capono Vital. I hope I said that last name right. What's up, bro? You said it right, man. Good to see you, AJ. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. So John, you already know cleaning. we all start. We always started off with the. Um, oh, I see. I see the logo going on over there. I see you. So you know, we <laughs> always started off with the, uh, the the million dollar question, right? Like, if you don't mind sharing about where you are as far as revenue goes with your cleaning company. Sure. So, I mean, we're at about 50 a month. Congratulate, congratulations yeah. on that. Let me get my applause where that shit I already had it rolling. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. I'm hyped right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, before we jump into how you got to that 50, <clears throat> 55 oh per month, bro, we're going to rewind a little bit and just ask you a little bit about who is Capono, where you're from, a little bit about your background done this already but um but yeah i'm capono i run my cleaning business out here in hawaii um born and raised uh california uh southern california san diego um and then eventually my family ended up relocating to missouri uh but i mean i feel like my story is probably similar to a lot of other entrepreneurs in this network um grew up we didn't have like all the nicest things in the world we we grew up with a big uh big family there were six kids um but my mom and dad did everything they could to provide for us. Um, you know, they gave us a roof over our head. We always had food. We always had clothes on our back. There were times where it did get hard, but um, but overall, you know, we we had a pretty rough upbringing. Uh, but I will say that I'm thankful that my parents did teach me hustle. Um, they taught me the hustle mentality. I feel like that's something that, like, it can, it's something that you really have to like, like it has to be within you to have the hustle mentality. And and to be in this like industry, being an entrepreneur, you got to have that mindset, man, like the hustle mentality. So my parents really taught me that even though um, they were like my mom was kind of entrepreneur. She always had entrepreneur spirit, but <clears throat> but but she had hustle mentality. And so I definitely picked that from my mom. And then my dad always taught me like, man, like growing up, you know, like minority, like, bro, we, we work hard like that. That's yeah. how we got to make it here. Like we got to yeah. work hard. And so, I mean, we, we've always had those mindsets and I mean, I guess that would, I mean, not guess that would definitely help contribute to, you know, the success of where we're at today, but yeah. just a little bit about me. Okay. That's what's up, bro. Now I remember the last time you were on for an interview, you came on six months after starting your company, you were already at seven grand a month and you also still had a day job. So I got to ask you now that you at the 50, are you still, do you still got the job? So, yeah, good question. Um, I, I had to leave. I mean, I was at a crossroads. I was at a point where I was working, you know, 40 hours a week at the company that I was at. And then I was I was giving my company, like I'd say, 40 to 50 to 60 to 70 hours a week. So it was, you know, it was kind of a big imbalance. Um, but at the time when I quit, I had almost 10 people working for me already. Wow. And it was and it was just like, here I am, I'm giving, I'm still working a job and I'm giving like part of me to, to the company that people are working for. And they love coming into work. They clock in every day. They enjoy, you know, working for the, for my company and they like enjoy the culture, everything. 
And I just felt like I was doing them a disservice by only working a little bit for my company yeah. versus yeah. going all in. <clears throat> and so, yeah. I, and so we, we were at a point in our business where I was like, I mean, I could quit my job and I could just run the business. Like, sure, yeah. we would lose the salary. We would lose the yeah. insurance. We would lose the <laughs> whatever, like every other concern that anyone has. But it's just like, I mean, if I, if uh, let's just see what happens. Yeah. So, so you said you had, oh, go for it. So when I, so, so then finally, you know, like I said, all of that was going on in my head and I was just like, all right, I got to quit. So I quit. I quit a good paying job. I mm-hmm. was working in finance. Like I had a good, I had a 30th floor ocean view suite, like everything. I, I was living the corporate life. <laughs> all right. <laughs> and then I was like, man, I'm leaving all this to clean some toilets. This is crazy, right. man. I can't believe this. <laughs> but, but it was just like, it was the right thing to do. And I'll be honest, the, the minute I left, um, that the first Saturday I quit my job, I flew out to Washington and I went to a cleaning and cocktails event. Shout out to Ricky and the team at Route. But yeah. I went to a cleaning and cocktails event <clears throat> and we had a we had a great training, a great conference. By the way, I'm looking forward to your conference. Sure. So <clears throat> but but uh, we we had a great conference and in three months our revenue tripled. Wow. In three months. And that was with me going quit <laughs> So that's me quit quitting my job, giving the company like all of me versus just like part of me right it was like let me give it all of me and let me see what will happen right and um and then just networking with like-minded individuals man and then like man it's a thing just exploded and since then we've almost tripled since then too so i i don't know man this is a great great. industry to be in this is a great industry to be in (laughs) Yeah, now for real, bro. So you walked away from this nice, beautiful corporate job with the nice view to get this cleaning toilet business, man. What in the world? So how did your family take it? Like, how did the wife take it? Did anybody like, you know, second guess you on it? Did you get any type of pushback at all? And then how how did you deal with it? If so, bro, of course you do, because people are like, "What are you? What are you thinking?" Like, a lot of people think it's just like a side. It's like a side hustle, right? It's like. Oh, you just like, oh, you do cleaning? And the first people think is, oh, you clean my house? <laughs> like, uh, that, <laughs> right. that ain't what we do, bro. Like, we're, we <laughs> like get contracts. We go after big contracts and people don't understand that. Yeah. So, so yeah, I mean, there was some pushback. But I mean, like, um, me and my wife, like, we've had, we had to have like a lot of talks and a lot of sit downs because she was, yeah. you know, she she's not used to this and I'm not either. You know what I'm saying? Right. We, we were both raised with, parents who had good job you know what i mean jobs and stuff like that her mom was an entrepreneur she started a business but she used to sacrifice a lot of her time and so my wife was a little concerned that i would just be giving so much time <coughs> and not family time N- another conversation but but just back to your question was it uh like did i get a lot of pushback yeah of course man some people just thought i was crazy you know what i mean but i was like man i think it's gonna work like it's already been working. Like let's just right. let's just let's give it a shot. And in the back of my mind, I always just thought like, I mean, the worst thing that could happen is that, I mean, it doesn't work out. I could always go get another job. Right, <laughs> bro. The, there, everyone everyone is hiring. So I mean, I'm like, it's not that hard to find a job. To be honest, exactly. like, yeah, everyone can find a job. But I mean, if there's that burning desire that this might work, man, try it. You know what I mean? And that, that's what that's what I did. I was like, bro, I should just try it, man. I mean, no one in my family has ever done anything like this. It, it's hard to be a pioneer, right? A pioneer, like someone who does something for the first time. Like, you have to blaze the trail for others to follow. It's hard to be a pioneer, man, because you, you're afraid of the unknown. All the concerns in your yeah. mind about, you know, what, what won't work or what can happen, you know, or what won't happen, whatever you think. But then there's also the fear of what could happen. Like yeah. it's like, damn, this, maybe this could blow up. Maybe I could get, you know, bigger. Maybe we could start to make more money. You know, maybe I could have more time with my family. Maybe I could, you know, do that. So it's like, you just have to, you have to see it. Are you, are you either looking at it from the dark side or are you looking at it from the bright side? Yeah, I always look at it from the bright side. Right. And I said the the only thing that I looked at negative was if it don't work out. Well, then I'll just go get a job. But the bright, the bright side is, I mean, this is an opportunity that, I mean, 
I feel like I have like one shot. So it's like if, if I have one shot right now and I can and it's working, let's just go for it. See what yeah. happens. I love it. I love it, bro, man. And you know, this, <laughs> that's why I love to do these interviews right here because mm. Like I went through that too. I quit my nice government job and people, I heard all the chatter, you know what I mean? People thought I was crazy yeah. and all that, but you know, and then we can't really post, right? Like on social media, we can't post and be like, yeah, I told you motherfuckers. I would, you know what I mean? You can't really, right. like, you know, you can't just tell them or tell them. And so it's like, I like to do these interviews so that way I can kind of do it for y'all. I'm going to put the income claim nice and big on a YouTube <laughs> video. I'm going to, I mean, share it everywhere. So that way you, you still get to be humble. And it's like, you didn't say it. I said, I, I, there you I go. told y'all I'm making it. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up, though. I'm, I'm, I'm proud, man. Congrats. So you said you had 10 employees working for you when you first quit your job. So now how many people do you got working for you? Almost 20. We got about 18. <clears throat> yeah. It, shout out to the Pacific <laughs> Island cleaning crew. You guys are amazing. By the way, if anyone up. ever sees it, shout out to the crew, man. I love my crew. I love my team. That's what's up, bro. I love it. Now... <laughs> um, people say nobody wants to work, but you got about 20 people working for you. Where they at, bro? Like, how are you finding these people to work? Because everybody's swearing nobody want to work. Yeah. Hey, and even more so where I live. So mm -hmm. in my demographic in Hawaii, um, I think we have one of the lowest labor, like um, lowest unemployment rates, which means everybody works two jobs or everybody mm -hmm. works three jobs just to make ends meet here. Because Hawaii is an expensive, we're like top five most expensive places to live. Okay. So so everybody is working, right? Um, but, you know, when, when I offer jobs to people, we're still trying to get to full-time jobs. Right? Uh, right now, all of our workers are all part-time yes. besides a couple. We have a couple full-timers. But <clears throat> I always tell people, you know, like, you, you just have to, I mean, I don't know if sell is the right word, but you just have to inform people of the culture of your company and so when i tell people like you know if you if, if you're interested in working with us like you know like we we're we're the type of company that you know we're we're a family-owned company we treat people like family we understand people have children and bills to pay and stuff like that we try to work with you our schedules are flexible like we don't believe in micromanaging like we we believe that if we hire good people good people will give us good work and like you know you you got to just inform people about the culture of where they're going to work because a lot of people i mean unfortunately are used to working in toxic cultures or like these big corporate cultures and they they feel like that's the type of job that they're getting and then sometimes when they experience like a, a family office or like a small family business culture it changes their entire perception of where they're working and so i feel like that's how we've had a lot of success with a lot of our crew and so a lot of them just they just really like working with us because of the culture like man it always it feels good working here you know like good company culture here like i, I enjoy the people i work with like they treat me good i'm appreciated you know and then we we just kept building from there we actually had um <clears throat> three of our employees hit their four sorry four of our employees recently hit their one year mark wow. so they've been riding with us they've been riding with <laughs> us man like basically since we started so i'm like yeah let's go that's what's up. That's what's up, bro. So let me ask you this then. So are these people W two employees or are they ten ninety nine contractors? We um we do have some ten ninety nine contractors who um, specialize in a service for us. So yeah. we have like one guy. He does a lot. He does all of our pressure washing. Shout out to No Coil Solution. Um, but he uh, he's a ten ninety nine contractor for us. He does some spraying jobs for us. We got another guy who we contract with. Um, to do like some post construction cleaning for us because Tim and his crew they're solid, and so they they help us out over there. But but all the employees, all of our crew, um, yeah. all W two. Okay, now I want to ask you what made you go that route because I know for me starting off, only reason I really didn't go that route it was mainly because I was scared. It sounded like more paperwork, it sounded like more you know taxes and stuff, and it was just I was just trying to keep it simple. And I noticed a lot of people follow that direction. <coughs> that I, but in reality, you know that's not the only way to go. So I would like to hear from you. What made you choose to go to W2 route? Sure. I'll be honest. I, I'm not really sure yet, but <laughs> we, we <laughs> okay. I'm still figuring this out. Yeah. But, but, but when we were doing it, uh, we were very interested in creating a payroll. And okay. um, I wasn't sure if you could do that with a 1099 worker or if they had to be W2. So when we were setting it up, 
um, it's a W two employee. Like we can put them on the payroll or whatever. Correct. Yeah. So and for so, payroll they got to mm, be W two. Yeah. So you were right. Yeah. So and so we were very interested in creating a payroll because we just had like all these people were tracking their hours and and it was just it just became a headache. So we just said we have to put people on a payroll. And um, I just, you know, part of that is like when you put people on a payroll, they feel like, you know, like, oh, like it's a direct deposited, like this is an official business, like, and you're like, yeah, I mean, that's how. And so, <clears throat> so um, that was kind of the biggest thing. We just wanted to make sure we could get our crew on a payroll. And so, um, so we've been doing that. There are some taxes and stuff involved with it, you know, that you got to pay monthly. So I would say if you are going to go W-2 route, make sure that you're you know, that your number, your revenue is good enough for you to make that jump to W-2. But if 1099 <clears throat> is a more affordable route, I would 1099 until you could hit W-2. But W-2 makes it so much easier for us. Like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Le I can see that. Less, less headache. Yeah. Less yeah. headache for us as you keep growing. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I love it, bro. Now, you went from corporate. We're going to go We're gonna go back there. Now you pretty much <laughs> run the corporation now. You the big dog. So how does that feel? Just period. I just want to know, like, how is it like to go from that to this? You the big dog now. All right. All right. I mean, I, I love it, man. Like, I love what I do. And um, I mean, I've always felt like like I could maybe one day, like, be in one of those chairs and one of those big corporations. Yeah. I always felt like one day they'd be flying me places to go to different meetings and Right. and do all these corporate trips and conferences and whatnot. I just never thought it was going to be me paying for it all. Thanks, bro. <laughs> Thanks. I was like, that's crazy, man. But, um, now, I'm a, I, I can relate to that. So I always dreamed of the same thing. And like you said, I never thought it was going to be my company. The first time I ever went to Miami was because I sold a product that required me to come out to the person in person. And I was like, for one, I couldn't believe they actually bought in Miami. And I was like, yes, yeah, thank you. And then I got to swipe the company card. I'm paying right. for the hotel. It's like, look at this. I'm taking business trips. I never thought it was going to be my company paying for it. You know what I mean? Right, so, right. It's hard, bro. That shit's hard. So, all right. Now, what services does your company offer? Sure. So, we've we've narrowed it down to six services. You can also see it on our website at www.pacificcountcleaning.com. But um, <clears throat> our main services is commercial cleaning services. So obviously janitorial services, which is our breadwinner. That's um, our you know recurring contract. We do floor care services, um, which includes stripping and waxing, shampooing carpets, yeah. um, pressure washing, right? And then we do window, window cleaning services. Um, we have all the equipment to do traditional or deionized window washing services. Okay. Um, and then we do post construction cleaning services. Um, and then I'm missing one, or maybe it's five. And then I th and then special events. Okay. So we we've been asked to do a lot of special events lately too. Like, can you clean up after a corporate party or an after an athletic event or something like that? Can you provide a crew to do this? And sure. Like, and yeah. so, yep. And so let's just say five, unless I'm missing one, but five services. And then um, we do some in residential um but right now all we're doing is moving and move out cleanings for gotcha. property managers yeah for property okay. managers okay so now what made you to go that route i'd imagine that you started in commercial cleaning and then you expanded so i'm, I'm wondering mm -hmm. like what made you expand pretty much yeah so i mean in the beginning we were only doing janitorial contracts right um just trying to find offices to let us come clean once a week or a couple times a week mm -hmm. and then as we kept growing and as you know like as an entrepreneur you're always trying to find out what other companies are doing that you can you know that can help grow your business or whatever so we research other companies and many of them do exactly what we do and yeah. you know what i mean it's offer become a one-stop shop in other words yeah like these guys can clean everything for us like right. we don't need to go and find someone to shampoo the carpet we don't need to find someone to strip and wash the clothes we don't need to find someone to you know what I mean? Pressure wash or clean our windows. They can do the full service. Right. And um, and many of our clients, they they want all of that. It's like, yes, we need this, but can you do this like once a quarter or once a year or something like that? And like, can you strip and wash the floors, right? Or can you clean the windows twice a year? You know, can you shampoo the carpets like once a year or something like that? And so if we say, oh yeah, we do all of that, 
it's a, it's like an easy thank you so much like you're making our life easier so we could just bring on one person and then you can just do everything for us and so i mean yeah and it was good because um like it also helped us just to get our foot in the door in a lot of places because if you're only saying i just want to clean your office it's like it's like okay but if you start off with saying can we just clean your windows and yeah. they're like oh sure like clean our windows and then that conversation leads to do you guys clean offices can you clean our office and it's like great yeah <laughs> so we'll start with the window we can start yeah. with the window contract for like a hundred or whatever bucks and then we will move into the into the janitorial contract but sometimes you just got to start with something small just to start the relationship with the client and then it's like okay but now can you do this for us and then it's like sure okay so, yeah i love that bro now i see you got it. You got uh, Pacific Island Cleaning is your is your company name. So how did you come up with the company name? Oh, man, that was tough. I'm not going to lie because uh, I was watching this podcast um, and he was saying, you know, if you're starting a new business, he said, imagine it as a billion dollar business and name it that. <laughs> and I was like, oh, wow. Because when we first started our, our company, we named it, it was, it's called Pauhana Cleaners, which in Hawaiian, that this just means like, you know, like um, we're done with the day or like Pauhana means like, you know, we're all done. So in other words, it's saying we're going to come in clean at the end of the day for you. So Pauhana Cleaners. And I was like, that's not a billion dollar. <laughs> that's not a billion dollar name. So, so we had to sit back and think about it. It took us like a week. And then finally, I was just like... <clears throat> Like, just trying to think of, like, what would really describe who I am as a person? What would help describe, like, what our culture is like and, and everything? And, um, man, we just thought of Pacific Island Cleaning. Yeah. So, yeah, Pacific Island Cleaning, it just kind of embodies who we are as a person, as a as a company, and as a culture. Yeah, and no, I so, love that, bro. Because, I mean, even if you think about the SEO, for example, they searching for cleaning in the Pacific Island, who going right. to come up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I love it. I love it. And speaking of, you you offer clean on multiple islands, correct? We do. Yeah. We do. So, so so I guess do you think like are the different islands not Pacific Island? And if so, do you think that might have deterred them or anything? <laughs> no, I think it. I think it helps us a lot. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, if you're unfamiliar with Hawaii, there's like six islands. In, okay. There's well, there's eight islands total, but there's six islands that you that are inhabited or that you could actually live on, you know, play on and do business on. And of the six, we do business on four. Wow. And so yeah, we have crews on every island basically now. So it's like that's crazy, man. And so <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> so we. And again, we have we have the best team. I'm so grateful for my team. I can't do this without you guys. And I love that, you know, everyone believes in me. Everyone believes in our company and they, they want us to succeed. So shout out to them. Um, but yeah, man, like like it, it's crazy, man. When when you're when you're first starting out and you're building a team, you're just trying to find people who can believe in the vision. Yeah. And and like for like, for example, some of our crew who's been with us for a year. Like, I'm like, man, they just believed in me from the jump. And they're just yeah. like, we're going to ride with you, man. And so I'm like, all right, let's do it, man. <laughs> and it's been great. I've been able to, like, in the beginning, they're working maybe one or two days a week. Like, now most of them are at five days a week, you know. It's, a, it's like, That's you know, gross. they stuck with me in the beginning when they were barely getting anything. And now it's like, perfect. Now I'm working like a good full-time, you know, like a full part-time schedule, like five days a week, 20 hours, you know, that kind of thing. So it's like perfect and now you know we just promoted one of our girls to a full-time manager position so so they're like i believe in you man <clears throat> and so like for them to believe in me it was just like how like i knew i had to quit it was like man i have all these people working for me right now like i gotta quit because yeah. i have to i have to go all in and see what we can do here I love yeah, that we, <laughs> now i was gonna you, ask man. you so so could you could you say i got all of these people working for me and that's when you knew you had to quit that job too and go all in for them and I'm wondering, like, okay, so did you ever, like, do a lot of the cleaning early on? Or did you kind of, like, hide from the beginning? Like, how did that go? In the beginning, oh, yeah. Out there, I was working my job. I would get yeah. off and I would go and clean. And I'd be out till, like, 8 o'clock at night, try to come home and spend some time with my kids. Right. And then right when I put them to sleep, it was right back on the computer trying to plan out my day for tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. So... <laughs> 
<laughs> oh my gosh, that was probably like the first like three to six months, man. That that's how it was. I mean, just a lot of sweat equity. You know, you got to go out there and build build the company of what you want it to be. So I'm out there hustling, man, and and um, you know, I just I just in the back of my mind, like this is just what it takes. Yeah. Like I wasn't afraid of it. I watched all your videos. I watched all your videos, man. <laughs> all your freaking videos, bro. This guy. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm over there cutting my grass, listening to all your interviews with freaking Tony and everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Ricky, it don't even matter, dude. I was just like, man, all these guys, they all clean toilets. They all like like vacuum floors and stuff. And I'm like, bro, I, I, like, I know I can do it, man. Like, they, everybody that you talk to, your story, everyone, man, like, it's all inspiring. So I was like, I mean, I know if I'm doing this, others have done it before me. For sure. So, you know what I'm saying? So I'm just like, bro, I, I could do this. Sure, it's going to be a little hard in the beginning. And that's what I kept telling myself. Every interview, it was hard in the beginning. It was hard in the beginning. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm going to say that one day. <laughs> right. And you, that's why I wanted to, to ask you that, too, to get that out. Because what I didn't want to happen was some new person... This is the first interview they hear of AJ Simmons. And then they like, oh, I'm about to just do what Capone did. I'm about to, I'm going to get me some builders on the side of my job. I'm going to put some people in there. And then once I get enough building, it's like, no, nah, he was out there grinding too. Don't think he was just straight, put somebody in there. He never touched a toilet ever in his life. You got, it's going to be some hard days. It's going to be some long nights, y'all. So just make sure that's clear. Yeah, man, long nights. So it was like, I remember I would have to wake up at five in the morning to go and clean up my first account. They wanted us to come at five in the morning. So I would go over there, clean that account. I would go straight to my job and work from eight to four. And then when I got off at four, I would head to my next account and I wouldn't be done there. I start there around five and then I'd finish around eight. Like I would rush home, say hi to my wife and kids and like yeah. kiss them goodnight. You know what I mean? Basically. And then they're already heading to sleep. <clears throat> and then right after that, I would get on the computer because I'm trying to build a business. Yeah. So it was like, I'm trying to find more clients because I mean, these clients weren't paying us 50,000 a month. It was just like, you know, some little like $900 contract or like a 700. It, they were, but for me, I was like, awesome. Like, yeah. um, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Right? right like you guys believe that we can fulfill this for you all right we're gonna i'm gonna do everything in my power and then slowly brought on some guys to help me and then like man from that point on i was like i just remember getting our first contract when we got our first contract i just knew that we can do this yeah. like everything worked <laughs> yeah. no, <laughs> like, that's true. And That's shout out to Clean Biz Network because I did follow your program. And I was like, shout out to CBN. I bought the program. I invested into it. I gave it time. I studied everything that, you know what I'm saying, that yeah. you put out. And I was just like, and when we got our first contract, I was just like, everything worked. And so, yeah. I mean, <laughs> at this point, it's like, it's going to work again. Like, And so yeah. I was like, we get one and then we can just keep on going. And so, I mean, we it just kept on going, man. We got one after the other. And, like, what do you know where we're at today? <laughs> <laughs> no, man. Did, did, did you know? Did you know we haven't hit two years yet? I did not. We haven't been in business for two years yet. That's crazy. This this happened in less than two years. <laughs> man, that's that's just unbelievable. <laughs> Hold on, where, where my horn at? Let me get my horn. Come on now, fifty thousand. <laughs> fifty thousand, bro. <laughs> A month. I don't know. Let me I'm trying to make. It. There we go. Fifty thousand dollars, man. After what? A little over a year. Like, come on, man. Less than two we're, years. We're at we're at twenty twenty three months. We there hit our go. we hit our we hit our two years next month. And that you want to know something crazy? Like, I remember when we talked. It was like the biggest month I've ever had. It was like I think eight thousand in one month. Mm. Our biggest month in this past two years. I mean, for some people, it's not much, but for me, it's a lot. All right, <laughs> we had a we had a hundred thousand dollar month, like a hundred thousand dollar month. That's like insane for me, man. Like I've never, <laughs> I've Come never on, like man. ever had that kind of money in my life. So I'm just like, right. what the heck, man? Like I can't believe like that this is happening. Hey, let let me make a shout out real quick. I got to give a shout out to God. Yeah, because. I feel like, you know, I, I'm pretty faithful. And like when I first started this business, there was a lot of prayer involved. There was a lot of, 
like, faith involved in like starting this and hoping that something would come up to fruition. And and anytime we hit a rough patch and there was a lot of rough patches, I always prayed and I always just said like, man, like please help me through this because I really want to see this grow and I and I really want to bless other families and like we have been very blessed and so I always know where all my blessings come from. That's Sorry, awesome. I just wanted to. Yeah, thank you. I just want to make a quick shout out to God. <laughs> I love that. I love that, bro. For real. Now, thank you. <clears throat> that or I tell you, all right. So let's, let's do this. So at this point in business, right? Yep. You out of the field now. So what is the typical work day looking like for Capono right now? Sure. So <clears throat> I'm not gonna lie. Um, I still get a lot of calls to do. I mean, we're at a point in our business where I get calls to come and do yeah. walkthroughs. Yeah, I get I get like a lot of people call me to give them quotes, give them estimates. Like my point in my business is um, where I'm at today is I just hired two new leaders to the team. And so I'm training them to help lead the team. I'm training them to help lead the business. Yeah. Um, yeah so we're training one manager of operations. She's going to help us kind of manage all of our operations. And then honestly, um, the other one is my wife. My my mm-hmm. wife is amazing. Shout out to my wife and shout gotcha. out to Winuka. Okay, yeah, yeah. Shout out to my wife. And so, so my wife is coming on. She's actually quitting her job, <laughs> and she's gonna okay. come on full time, full time, because I told her, if you don't, <laughs> if you don't come on, I gotta hire someone, because I'm yeah. wearing so I'm wearing so many hats. So it's like you know I, I'm I'm like the admin hat one day, and then the other day I'm in the field, and I'm like running the business and i'm and i'm like the other day i'm wearing the ceo hat and i'm going to meetings and i'm like yeah. you know what i mean trying to grow and so i'm like i have to like i don't like i don't need all the money to come to me i don't care right. we need to distribute it like yeah. we need to just dis- distribute the money so that we can establish a good business model like hire leadership train leadership help them run the business hire admin office manager help them yeah. run the business and then, and then I can focus on CEO tasks. Yep. CEO tasks is grow the business, <laughs> like yes, yes. sales, yeah, sales and like operations. Like that's that's where I need to be. And so, like that that's where we're at right now. Like we're training new people in their leadership roles so that they can help grow the business with me. Yeah, now so you want to? I was like, you on an yeah. unstoppable path, bro. You get it. <laughs> like you clearly get it. <laughs> <laughs> yep and so you know i'm uh <clears throat> so they're very excited for their new roles so right now i've just been creating a lot of training um but i'm not gonna lie i still get out in the field um yeah. like we just signed a big contract with t-mobile recently so we're cleaning a bunch of t-mobile stores and verizon stores and stuff and so i mean i still get out there in the field i still do my own cleaning and i count that as like side jobs right yeah. versus like our recurring contracts so i still get out there i still clean man because I still find a lot of like, th- I mean, cleaning is a very like therapeutic um, mm-hmm. industry, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. right? Like there, there's a lot of therapy that can go into it. Like you can go in there, you can throw on your headphones and you can just, you know, start cleaning. I always tell my cleaners that I'm like, man, if you want to listen to music, listen to music. It's like, it's fine with me. You know, it's like, there's a lot of therapy to it. And so I still get out there and I, I still go do my own cleaning. Um, I still go out and do my own inspections. I still go out and I, I do, I have one-on-ones with my crew. Because I care about my crew. Like, yeah. if you sh- if you show your crew that you care, man, like, they will perform for you. Like, yeah. they 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 will want to work hard for you because they know that they got a they got a boss or, you know, someone who like cares about them. So I yeah. I talk with them. You know, we have lunch together. We I bring food for the crew. Like, and so like I you know I just show my crew that I care and I appreciate them. And um, so that's that's kind of what normally my work day looks like. But we are at a point in time in my life where. I do have more time. Now I have more time. Yeah. In the beginning, I had no time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I do appreciate the time that I have in the morning to get my kids ready for school, to take them to school, to, you know what I mean? To pick them up and to do homework with them and to be home at night for dinners. Like, I don't know how many dinners I miss, you know, but, um, but I do appreciate like where we're at today, where I can actually have some more time to, to be with my family. So. Yeah, that's what's up, bro. Now I know you said these days the cut the business pretty much calling you. You don't pretty much you don't really have to outreach to find more business at this point. But there was a time where it wasn't like that. So just for the new people watching, how did you originally start getting customers for your company? 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, originally when we first started, there was a lot of just like the Nike Express. You get out yeah. there and you hit the ground and you, you get out there, you, you make some flyers. You literally yeah. follow what this dude's program. Shout out to CBN again, man. Like, yeah. I'm telling you, man, like the flyers, the business cards, we did it, man. Like, I did it all. I'm a pretty yeah. good student. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I was a pretty decent student. So I was like, let me just go through this whole program and do it exactly how it says and see what happens. <laughs> right. So your program said, let's build some flyers. Let's make some business cards and let's go hand them out. All right, you, let's do it. Let's <laughs> right. Do it. <laughs> so it like, works, right, I'm telling go. you. Yeah. And so, and so we would do that. Um, like my, my, my rotation would be, I would make phone calls in the morning. And then I would go and hand out flyers in the, like, after, like, 2 o'clock. So, so after around 2 o'clock, right around when I feel like everyone's kind of winding down and in their office, you know. So, we would go hand out flyers after 2. And then I would just be cold calling all morning. I'd stay up all night. Like I said, I'd come home, 8 o'clock, the kids go to sleep. I'd, I'd go back on the computer and I would literally Google places that I felt like we could hand them a flyer. <laughs> and I would just write a list and I would, this is their name, this is their number, <laughs> and I'm going to call them tomorrow. Right. And uh, I, I'd have over a thousand calls easily, um, probably handed out, I don't even know, over 500 flyers. I don't even know. <laughs> but that's, that's, that's what it takes. And in my experience, this is how it was. I would... I would call someone, I would, you know, I would tell them like we would were interested in giving them services that they would blow me off. <laughs> okay, <Yeah>. perfect. <laughs> and yeah. same with the flyer. I would give them a flyer. Ah, we're good, you know, we have someone. And I'm like, okay, no problem. <clears throat> and I would forget about it. Mm -hmm. Right? And what always ends up happening is one or two months down the road, they have my flyer, they have my contact information, and they will mm -hmm. call me. And that is that is how it worked for me. It was like I didn't see it that day. Like I didn't see a new client that day. But in a month or in two months, I had yeah. I had someone knocking on my door. And they That's were like, Hey, yeah, like are you still doing cleaning service? Like, yes. Like what like how can we help you? <laughs> so that's but yeah, up, that man. that's how the that's how the grind is in the beginning. Like, man, countless, countless hours of that. <laughs> <laughs> just trying to build this <laughs> right so so with that said i guess before we jump into this lightning round what would you say has been the hardest part from getting from zero to fifty thousand a month i i mean I, I i could easily revert back to the beginning stages is always the hardest yeah. like the, those first six months is probably going to be your hardest um but i would say like after that it's it's really like because after you reach a certain number we're like dang like we're doing it it's like the the part of expansion like where we're at in our business today we're like we're trying to expand is finding the right people to grow with yeah. it's like you know what i mean like and i know that that's everyone's struggle but all you need is like two or three good people yeah. honest people who believe in you Yep. And you have two, if you have two or three good people who believe in you, like that, that's all you need. You know that, man, I have a strong team that believes in me and that believes in the company and that we all believe in each other. Yeah. And, and if we, and we just have this core group, we can take this to places that, you know, that, that I would have never imagined. And so I would say like, after you build your team, because man, there's a famous quote, you know, the quote, but it says like, if you want to get there, go alone fast yeah, go alone you if you want to go far then go together yeah exactly yeah if you yeah. want to get there fast go alone but if you want to go far you got to go together and so yeah. that's that that's like i'm not gonna lie we hit a certain number pretty fast and then i said the only way we're gonna go further is if we build like the core team you know what i mean and yeah. so yeah so that's that's what i would say like if you're trying to get to this number you need the team like you need a couple good people, honest and you know, honest people who value you, you know what I mean, and value your company and your culture, and you're gonna get there. You're gonna get yeah. there if you have the right people. Yeah. That's excellent advice, Capono. Now, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna switch it up a bit. We're gonna jump into this lightning round. And before we do, I'm gonna play these tunes by my baby girl. 
Amaya. Shout out to Maya Simmons for checking in. All right, so we got the two. So, Shout out to Maya. <laughs> right? So the way this works is, I'm going to say a word or a phrase, and you just tell me the first thing that comes to your mind. You ready? Let's go. All right, first one is Hawaii. Home sweet home. All right. Next one is entrepreneurship. Greatest decision I've ever made. Okay. Uh, the cleaning business. Billions and billions of dollars. <laughs> Back, <laughs> literally. Literally, though. Uh, social media. Spend too much time on it. <laughs> okay. Which platform do you spend the most time on? Probably Instagram. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Fair yeah. enough. What's your Instagram, by the way, for people to follow you? All right. Personal Instagram is at K K um, okay. and then our company handle is uh, Pacific Island Cleaning. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. All right. Yeah. Next one is Clean Biz Network. Cold the Goat Clean Biz Network. <laughs> Appreciate that. Appreciate that. <laughs> yep. All right. Um, if you had to sing a karaoke song word for word, or <laughs> you lose everything you have, which karaoke <laughs> song are you choosing? Wow. Karaoke, bro. Um, <laughs> let's see. <laughs> right. Probably Tennessee whiskey. Okay. <laughs> I don't know that, but we would we gonna learn today, look when you sing it, right? <laughs> Good old country music. Okay, fair enough. All right. Uh let's see. Which okay, would you rather have a million dollars cash or fifteen thousand dollars passive every month? For the rest of my life. For the rest of your life. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, I'd probably take a million dollar cash. <laughs> you know why I would say that too is because what well, the rest of your life could be tomorrow if you get hit by a bus, right? <laughs> so <laughs> at least I can leave my family that million dollars I just got. Right, hey, <laughs> hey, there you go, guys. <laughs> so all right, the next one is uh let's see, you would you rather have Okay, your favorite YouTube channel other than mine. Um I ain't gonna lie, I watch a lot of uplift. <clears throat> okay. Shout out to Upflip. I seen they said. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, they they I kinda do that. similar stuff to you. Yeah. But I love watching that. entrepreneurship stuff. Yeah, I like it. Okay. Uh key to success. Ooh. I would say Faith and Perseverance. Okay, okay. I like that. I like that. Uh, let's see what else we got. Best decision you've ever made in business so far? Well, from this, from to date, where I'm at to date. Yep. Buying AJ's program. Shout out to CBN. Appreciate that, bro. Appreciate that. Uh, uh, your favorite hobby when you got some free time? Um... I love to play guitar and and mix some kava with the boys. Okay, okay. <laughs> That's what's up. All right. Uh, what else one else I got for you? I'll do this one. Now, I know you listen to country, but do you listen to rap at all? I do, of course. Well, you know, I, I want your top five rappers all the time to wrap it up. All right. Ooh. All right, of all time, probably like... Jay Z, um, like I like Eminem, um, okay. J Cole, nice. Probably like like Nas. Okay, one more, one more. <sighs> I mean, I don't know, I'd probably say Drake. Okay, that's a solid five right there. That's a solid five right there. I don't know, man. I don't know how how good I am in the rap industry. But. <laughs> right, that was solid though. That was all of them could spit. So, good. That's good on that. So, that wraps it up for the lightning round right there. Thank you, Capono, for playing with me. So, we got a couple more questions for you before we wrap it up. So, here we go. Uh, what would you say is your long term goal for for your business? 
long term goal is um <clears throat> well we'd like to become a five million dollar company. Okay. Like if I if I'm thinking long term and that could take us twenty years, I have no idea. But yeah. we'd like to become a five million dollar company and we would like to expand to the mainland. Because all of our business is in Hawaii. Okay. I'm in I'm curious. I gotta follow that up. Mm-hmm. Why five million? What's going to happen once you get to five million? Well, when we get to five million, we we're left with a a lot of decisions at that okay. point. Okay. Yeah, because we could either at that point we could continue to grow it, or we could we could yeah. sell it, <laughs> right? <laughs> or we could we could you know, but but we're trying to hit that number. And yeah. so if we and the thing is, like in this industry, like it's not impossible. <laughs> like, at all. Like, right like yeah. uh, i'm like i mean it sounds like a crazy number but i'm like man like the more you get into it you're like this is this is not like a crazy number to hit yeah and so <clears throat> i mean i just i know so many people doing it that i'm like man i feel like we can do that yeah so now i tell you what take us a while i'll tell you what me and you have we have a similar goal on that for similar reasons and so i'll just tell you something that i've been doing lately mm-hmm. is you know, I always had the lead generation service, but now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get into subscription based model for the leads and really wrap it up so we can start getting, you know, thousand dollar, five thousand dollar, maybe even ten thousand dollar month contracts. Because when you're dealing with contracting industries like like commercial cleaning and like how I'm trying to do with this subscription based model, I'm going with the leads. It's so easy to get to, you know, multiple millions yeah. a year. You get those multiple millions a year. Now we're talking about different type of evaluations. Now we're talking exactly. about different type of equity partners or even like you said selling opportunity all type of stuff opened up so i'm with you a thousand percent on that one bro but uh here we yep. go all right you if already you had- almost there this guy yeah <laughs> 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 you already there man you i'm not, to, I'm, not. To I'm fighting back bro because 23 was a down year for me so i got i'm trying to get back bro i'm trying to get back so man, yeah, you ain't got it, man. yeah all right so here we go so if you had a, if you had started all over again from zero what would you do to get back to that point well, if I were, I would have quit my job sooner. Yeah. Um, I would have. Yeah, golly, I feel like if I would have quit six months earlier, bro, we would have been soaring, dude. Wow. <laughs> but yeah, I would have. I would have quit my job sooner, and I would have just had more faith, man. Because the concerns, the concerns always outweigh right like you can't really see the light at the end of the tunnel because you're clouded by concern yeah. and it's like what if this doesn't work what if what if something like oh we're gonna lose this we're gonna lose that it's like man it's gonna work like you just have to have like like unwavering faith that yeah. this is gonna work you know what i mean yeah so if i could what, do if i could do it all over again i would have quit sooner how how long did it take you to quit it took me um well, because I had to come up with an exit strategy in my industry, like you kind of have to do that. So it took me about three months to quit because I had to okay. like pr- prepare everything. Before well, I excuse left. me, I think I'm asking it wrong. I mean, like from the time you started your business, because I know in our first interview, you had you still had the job and you were six months in at that point. So mm-hmm. like how long after starting your business did you take to quit? Oh, OK. So, we, yeah, it took me a, a year and two months to quit. Gotcha. So gotcha. So you really wish you would have really quit it right around the time we had our that time. That's what I was thinking. Okay. <laughs> okay. So right around, right around that around time, we were, yeah. yeah, we were like, we were soaring, man. And I was just like, I mean, I just knew that where it was going. <laughs> so yeah. I was just like, dang, man, I should just, but, you know, but anyways, I'm happy with where we're at. But if I could do it again, I would have quit six months ago or yeah. six months earlier. That's what's up. That's what's up. All right. Now, the final question I always ask everybody as we wrap it up is if somebody's watching this video right now, they listen to the podcast right now and they're like, man, I'm trying to be like Capono. I want to do what Capono did, but I don't know that I'm still kind of scared. What would you say to that person right now? I would say, I would say, man, the cleaning industry, there is so much opportunity that I just feel like you have nothing to be afraid of. Like that you will find business, you will find clients and that like things will work out. I'll say that, you know, if you, if you got the CBN program, it will help you out. Like it, it did me, you know what I mean? Like I'm a testimony of it. So, yeah. and um, 
I would say like t- take the jump. And if you're if you're concerned or like mine where you needed to keep your job and then work it on the side, do it. It's gonna take a lot of time. It like it'll be very hard in the in the beginning, but eventually you'll you'll hit your number where you can leave. And you know what I mean? Then you'll feel good. So much opportunity in this industry that you will find clients. Yeah. So yeah, I would say take the jump, man. This is a this is a beautiful industry. The people who work in the cleaning industry are like some of the best people in the world. Yeah. So some of the most humble people in the world. Like all of us come from humble beginnings, humble backgrounds, right? And so it's like you, we work in the cleaning industry. We we clean, right? Yeah. But like, but there, there's passion in that, man. And it's just like you know, we we all appreciate each other's work, each other's stories, and where we all came from to be where we're at today. So yeah. No, I love it. I love it, bro. And thank you so much again for coming back on, Mr. Capono Fatal, y'all. How can we follow your journey, Capono? Well, thank you, AJ, for having me. Shout out yep. to you, bro. I appreciate you. I follow you, man. <clears throat> I will be seeing you in February. So we already my we already got it all planned out right now, all right? Perfect. But um, please follow our journey, everybody. Uh, you can follow me at K Fatal. Um, and then if you wanted to follow our company, it's at Pacific Island Cleaning. All right. So, man, good luck to everybody who's in the cleaning industry trying to make it like me. All right. Let's Shout get out it. To everybody. Let's get it. <laughs> All right, Capone. <laughs> appreciate you coming on. Good to see you, AJ. I'll talk to you later, bro. All right, bro. Thanks. Listen, every single year I host the biggest celebration of the cleaning industry, and that's the Clean Biz Network Conference, y'all. And get ready. Get your tickets ASAP before time runs out. Go to www.cbnconference.com and meet me there. We're going to be in Las Vegas, y'all. Las Vegas at the JW Marriott Hotel. Get your tickets. You do not want to miss this event. Every single year it gets bigger and better. The dates are February 28th through March 1st, 2024. And this year, and we got a special guest hosting, y'all. This next conference that will be hosted by none other than Tenacity Academy, y'all. Tenacity Clean, y'all seen them on their YouTube channel, Mrs. Johnson, Miss Tamika. They're going to kill it. They're going to bring that energy. And not only them, we also got some amazing speakers lined up for y'all. I'm talking about Mr. Eric Coffey from GovCon Giants. If you are interested in government contracts, everybody knows Eric Coffey is the man. He is the GOAT of the government contract, y'all. So you definitely want to be there to hear from him. We got Raylan Dunlap from the Hustle Network. Check out our YouTube channel. Massive, all about just hustling and getting to this money, y'all. Shout out to the Cleaning Balls family. Meet DJ the Balls at the Clean this network conference we also got mila the host keeper the queen of airbnb cleaning y'all miss carolyn arilano y'all already know that she killing it as well in the cleaning space the legendary debbie sardone who has been the number one residential cleaning consultant for i don't know how long now she's probably the best to ever do it in the residential cleaning space mr mario kelly who specializes in stadiums, y'all. If you ever wanted to know how to get those big contracts cleaning the sports stadiums and all of that, you do not want to miss this. Mario Kelly will be there. And we also have the king of client attraction, Mr. Mark Will Russell will be in the building. You do not want to miss the event. And we have so many other great speakers as well, too many to name. Not to mention we're going to have breakout sessions. We're going to have special dinner served. It's going to be a black tie affair. We're going to give out awards. I'm telling you, it's going to be so big. Live DJs, you do not want to miss this event. Go to www.cbnconference.com. Get your tickets. Meet me there. Meet my wife. Meet my kids. We all going to be there. Let's get it, y'all.